Hi again, audience. So welcome back to our Mass Effect series. And we're going to be talking about a non-playable character right now. And Who is less important to the plot. So we are going to be talking about a character from Mass Effect 2 who goes by the name of David Archer. He is a major... Well, I don't really want to say he's a major character from the Overlord DLC because he doesn't really show up for most of it. Yeah, but he's a key part of it, but as a person, he, he is not the most important thing. Again, it's a DLC, so mm -hmm. you don't even need it to progress with the game. So that's why we've labeled him as a less important one. Mm -hmm. is the younger brother of Chief Cerberus scientist Dr. Gavin Archer <coughs> and basically they're stationed on the planet I-8 sorry if I butchered that um, and they are trying to figure out ways to communicate with the Gep. Now David is autistic and a mathematical savant and this, I don't quite understand it, but this somehow, hi Cody, this somehow lets him communicate with the Geth himself. He knows what they're saying in their static -y language. That's what it sounds like to me, static. No, definitely, it's like static. So, what does, what does his older brother decide to do? He decides to forcibly hook up his brother to a machine and... David becomes this hybrid VI who they intend to use to communicate with the Geth. Gavin Archer, he, he undoubtedly wins Brother of the Year. But, so... It, 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 it really does torture David. Like, you hear him screaming throughout the DLC. You don't even realize it's a human screaming until later, but mm -hmm. once you realize that, you definitely hear it. Yeah. So, he's... Because it is too much for David's brain to handle when they hook him up with the VI, and it could it just goes berserk. And he, he tries to infect the Normandy with his virus so he can get out, basically. Mm-hmm. He's front of them. But when you... But throughout the DLC, at... David is able to <laughs> communicate with you because David <laughs> is oh, able no, to. No teething on my friend. <laughs> because don't do that. That's mean. Because David's able to communicate with the Geth, as we said before, and well, Shepard's not a Geth. D David's also able to control other tech, and Shepard is um, part cybernetic in the second game. Because of so how you were revived. Yeah, he has a level of control over you. Mm hmm Like, he can't take you over, but he can make you see things. Yes, and hear him. And when you can finally understand what he's saying, all he keeps saying is quiet and please make it stop, which is actually very common for someone who has autism because people who have autism, they generally do not like loud noises. It affects them very ne in a very negative way. But so... Uh-uh. If David go there. Because it's a game, if he does affect the Normandy, then you do have to try again until you beat him. But once you've done so, you have two options. You can either let the project continue with David, or you can take him away and send him to a place called Grissom Academy, which is basically a, uh, a, an, an alliance, which is the military you work for, sanctioned and run school that teaches you know, kids with advanced abilities, whether it's you're a biotic or you're... Very good with tech. There's a long list, but David qualifies. Mm-hmm. So you have the choice. 
And if you send him to Grissom Academy, you do run into him in the third game. You see him, he remembers you, he remembers your ship's VI. He yeah. Edie. If you a bring, moment. Yep. If you bring Edie with you, then David will apologize to Edie because he remembers her as the Normandy computer. She accepts it, and he has this thing with, uh, like, square roots. Yes, because he's a mathematical savant. And I don't remember what the exact equation is, but... Both you and his brother respond to it, which he likes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, you see Gavin again, who asks about David. And you can either let him worry, or you can tell him that David is safe. Yeah, and even if uh, you didn't do the Overlord DLC, you still see Gavin in Mass Effect 3, and he mentions, you know, some of the events, but if you hadn't gone, he would have shut it down himself, but David would have died. Yes. Also, if you let David stay at Project Overlord, I did read that David's mind was not able to handle it in the end, and... Gavin is forced to euthanize him. So, yeah. If you play the DLC, probably his, best. His best future is if you get him out of there. Yes. <laughs> so, so that's it on David Archer. Yeah, not really a long video. As we said, he's, he's a pretty minor NPC character despite his role, his big role in a DLC. But mm -hmm. there's not really much to him, especially since he's not there until the end of the DLC. Mm -hmm. So, moving on to our other categories, starting with, does he work? <coughs> now, the game would move, would go on without him regardless, but as the DLC and DLCs, while they can add to the experience and make it better, they're not required. But in terms of the Overlord DLC, then yes, he does work because it's his mind that is hooked up to the VI. And well, that just means he's needed for the DLC. That does not mean he works as a character. That's true. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, he is important but we don't really know much about his personality. Other than he's autistic, and he likes square roots, and he can somehow talk to Geth. So we can't really say much. Like, he has a bit more personality in number three in your brief conversation. He remembers you, he seems to like you, he vouches for you with some of the other students. Because his classmates that he's with, um... They don't really trust you because you're, you're there because the place is overrun with the, with the enemy who are trying to kidnap all the students, so they're understandably wary, but he recognizes you, which smooths things over. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, we don't really get much of a personality for him, so I don't think we can really say much for this section. No. He doesn't not fit, but he doesn't really fit either, because we just don't know much about him. I mean, he's needed in his, in the DLC, but... Again, there's not a lot about his personality. Yeah, we don't know what, he, besides math, we don't know what he likes, we don't know what his worries are. We don't even really know what he thought of his brother. Yeah. Although, I think at, I think at the end of the Overlord DLC, if you choose to take him to Grizzom, you can hear him say it all seemed harmless, or something along that line. I don't recall, it's been a while since I've played that. But other than that, like we've been saying, we don't get much out of him. I will give Bioware a lot of credit, though, because for... I haven't seen a lot of characters with who have autism in video games, and they got a pretty accurate depiction from what I've learned about autism. Okay, so then for our next section, it is, does he work in the setting. Like we said in previous videos, it's kind of hard not to work in the Mass Effect universe.
universe, even if you are a human. Okay, well, there's one thing that kind of puts me out of it, like, so in the previous section you talked about how good of a example of autism he was. Mm-hmm. But that also kind of takes me out of the game because he is the only autistic character or any character with some kind of mental disability shown in the game. No other character, so it's like mm -hmm. no, 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 not even a side NPC character in like the background. Nothing. So he's the only one. So that's I just think that's kind of weird that you would just throw it in for this. <coughs> Hmm. Like, I have no problem with, you know, autistic characters being in video games. Do not think this is about that, but it's just... It, he's the literal only one. So it just, it strikes me as a little odd and all. So he is a little out of place in that regard. No. Like, if there were more, then yeah, he'd fit in much better in my mind. But if it's just him, then... Mm -hmm. It does make him stand out, I guess, but like not in a good way. Because the other- Not in a bad way either. Because again, it's not about him being autistic. It's about him being the only one. So it's like, it's not a good stand out. It's a, why are you doing this stand out? So it's just, you know, we see him for literally like two scenes in the, in the whole trilogy. So again, hearkening back to what we said in the first section about, you know, just not knowing a lot about him, that also affects how well he fits into his setting because given he's so different from everybody else, it's not like, oh, he's just an NPC, so we don't really need to know a lot, which is fair and accurate, but if you're pushing like, this is the only person with mental instability, at least that I know of, in the game, then you can't just leave it at that and expect him to fully fit in with the rest of the large cast of characters. That's my opinion, though. It's not the only one, and... But it does make sense. Yeah. So, so that brings us to our last category. Do we like him? I don't really have much of an opinion of him. I feel really bad for him because he went through hell. Yes, I definitely... At the hands of his brother, someone who did love him. Mm-hmm. Because as messed up as Gavin was, he did love his brother. You could, you could feel that. Mm-hmm. But, like... Other than feeling pity for him for his shitty situation, I just I mean, they don't really care. Because, I mean, his brother was, like, as terrible as his brother was as a person, he was a more compelling character, I thought. Definitely, because you don't, like we said, there's not a lot to know about David. But, so... Don't love him, but don't hate him either. It's just, I he's feel just, really, just there. he's just there, and you do feel really sorry for him because of what his brother put him through. So yeah, that's that for David Archer. So, well, one more video left in the Mass Effect series, and we will be talking about another non-playable character, but... We're going to talk with someone with a little more personality. And presence. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you guys in our final video. Bye. Bye.